Hey everyone, welcome to another Clean Machine Live. I'm Jeff Palmer, the CEO and founder of Clean Machine. Clean Machine is a plant-based fitness nutrition company and we focus on trying to help people get to good results for health and fitness using a plant-based and a plant-exclusive diet. All right, what is today's topic? Well, there is a flood of new research coming out recently um, which made me pretty excited. That part made me excited that there's getting more information out there what the benefits of a plant-based diet are for those with diet BDs. <laughs> so what is diet BDs? Diet BDs is diet-influenced uh, insulin resistance. Type 2 diabetes is called insulin resistance. All right, so let's dig into the details. It's very exciting that there's so much great research coming out now. Four studies just in the last two months uh, showing the health benefits of a plant-based diet at creating remission. Uh, that means a complete cessation of any diabetic symptoms at all simply by using a plant-based diet. Four studies just in the last two months. This is pretty exciting that this information is finally getting from the medical and research communities and the education communities and into the mainstream audience. And that's what I am trying to do here is bring some of this cutting edge research to you so that you have it to share with those who you care about, those who you love, who may be pre-diabetic or diabetic. But first, before I get started into this, this video is for informational and educational purposes only. It's not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. That said, some of this research is talking about just like that. So I won't be saying this. I'll be quoting directly from the study to make it clear. These are not my words. These are, I'll be reading verbatim from the research because they're talking about actually reversing and causing the elimination of all diabetic symptoms using diet alone. So let's jump into the research. Okay, that part is really exciting. The part that's hard for me is I was reading on my high school uh, board that one of, um, one of the people I knew in high school, who is exactly my age, um, was overweight and diabetic and recently passed. And I'm thinking, my God, if I had ended my age at this level, how much life I would have missed out. And I, I lost my mother when she was 60. I lost my father when he was 48. I lost both of my brothers in the early 50s. So it, within a matter of months, I will have outlived every single person in my family, except my sister who's still alive, thank God. But this is this is horrible. This is not the way human beings should be functioning. We're really designed to live for close around 100 years and there's plenty of centenarians on this planet to show that that's the case why are we dying so early and diabetes is according to the research that i'm going to talk about is reversible is you can, can go to complete remission now some of the plant-based doctors are saying that it's 100 percent curable i'm not going to take that step because most of the research is saying that, yes, it can come back. Of course it can come back. If you go back to the same old crappy diet, of course it'll come right back. I think they're misunderstanding what curable means. It means curable means that if you actually do the right lifestyle behavior, in their eyes, the plant-based doctors are talking about actually reversing permanently this. And there's several other people out there that we'll talk about all I'll touch base on that at the end of the things. And look, if you don't stay around for the whole one, I'm going to be covering a lot of research. That's okay. I'll try to speak quickly so conserve your time. But uh, I want to get into the details because this is powerful research. Okay, um, so let's let's clear up some confusion. Um, there's still most of the people out there that I know that I talk to think that carbs and sugar cause diabetes and they do not. And we know this. <laughs> we know this because we understand the cellular physiology right now. So what happens is that many doctors, and therefore, of course, all the people listening to the doctors, uh, mistakenly believe that the symptom of high blood sugar is actually the root cause of diabetes. 
and it is not. So let's explain this. So once you get fat inside the cell, the body has a lot of energy to break down and utilize for energy, for creating ATP through glucogenesis. Okay, so it's got a lot because remember, fat has uh, almost two and a half times as much calories per, uh, per unit as uh, protein or carbohydrates, including sugars. So fat is almost two and a half times the caloric. So when you got some fat molecules, one, that fat molecules can be much larger and coagulative. When you have all that energy inside the cell, the body says, wait a minute, we've got enough energy. We can't take any more in. So the, when insulin binds, it's not sending the signal and the glucose channels will stay closed, won't allow sugar into the cell to be used for energy. That is insulin resistance. That's your cell saying, no, I'm resisting any more calories coming in in the form of carbs or sugars. Okay. Now, does carbs or sugars cause insulin resistance? No, just the opposite is actually true. Carbohydrates and sugars, even pure white table sugar, increases insulin sensitivity. That means there's more, the more the sugars in this in the system, obviously within a healthy range, too much of anything is not a good thing. But just putting even, even white sugar in this, and this was actually shown in a study way back in the 1930s. They took people and put them on a low fat diet. So it it, it caused them to burn up the fat that was inside the cells, causing diabetes, and then actually fed them nothing but white, uh, white flour, white bread white rice and white sugar or fruit juice, right? All the high carbohydrates, even white table sugar and their diabetes cleared up. That's phenomenal. That's amazing. It's exactly what the mainstream and what most people out there think is causing diabetes. It is not sugar. Sugar increases the sensitivity. The cells want to soak up that blood sugar, want to pull that sugar because we need to get that sugar down. The reason the sugar can't get into the cells is because there's all a bunch of fat stuck in there and it can't get in. The, the insulin stops being effective. Why? Because the fat starts to break down and it releases chemical signatures. Uh, Dr. Greger has done a really great video of it to show you the whole visual image. I'm going to put that in the uh, links below and I'll post it up on the website too as well. It shows you exactly the chemical mechanisms that are going on inside the muscle cells that cause that sugar not to go in it. Yes, that excess sugar is a problem in the bloodstream. So eating a whole bunch of fat and eating a whole bunch of sugar at the same time, yeah, that can be a problem. But it's the fat that's causing that. For that cell to say, no, I can't take any more energy into the cell. That's insulin resistance. That's what type 2 diabetes is. Okay, so now that that's clear, I'm going to read this directly from Nutrition Facts because he describes it very well. So fat in the bloodstream can build up inside the muscle cells, creating toxic fatty acid breakdown products and free radicals that block insulin signaling process. No matter how much insulin we have in our blood, it's not able to sufficiently open the glucose gates and blood sugar levels build up in the blood. Remember, if you don't add the blood sugar, yeah, of course it's not gonna build up, but it's the fat inside the cell that's causing it. Okay, to finish the quote from Dr. Greger, just, and, and this can happen within three hours of eating a meal. That's right, just 160 minutes, one hit of fat can start causing insulin resistance, inhibiting blood sugar uptake in the cells. One meal, three hours later, and you are already showing pre-diabetic or diabetic symptoms of insulin resistance. One meal, three hours later, and you're already, your body is in insulin resistance. Now, imagine if you're doing that with every single meal, pounding away with every single meal, high fat, high um, carb diets. Yeah, if you remove the carb, it's not gonna put a shot the blood sugar, but you've already created the problem with all the fat inside the cells. Until you get that fat out of the cells, it's going to resist insulin, period. 
that's the way human physiological cells work. And it makes sense. You don't want to put too much energy in the cell or it'll shut down its ab the cell's ability to respire, breathe, basically. You're basically suffocating the cell with fat by too much fat and globules in it. And there's a whole host of other problems I won't go into because they're toxic breakdowns and it gets really chemically, but um, that's what's going on inside the cell. One meal, three hours later, and you're already insulin resistant. Diabetes is amazing that our body can actually get rid and move and stuff and do this. And this is why exercise is so important. If you've got fat in that cell and you're exercising, you're burning up the, the uh, calories quicker, and then the body can reduce that fat and then pull in sugar normally, and you don't have uh, that sugar build up in the bloodstream. Now, why is that sugar building up in the bloodstream a bad thing? Because it breaks down into bad metabolites called AGEs, and they do just that. They are aging to the cells because they are toxic to the cells. They can cause blindness. They can cause um, uh, amputations. You know, uh, the number one cause of blindness in the United States is diabetes, and it's 100% preventable by just exercising and diet, changing to a plant-based diet. All right, so let's get into the studies. Study number one. I've got these pre-done this time, so you don't have to wait for me to post the study, so I can just pull them right up on the screen now. I'm learning. Okay, so uh, this study is called a global deficiency of nutrition, education, and physical training. So what, what were they talking about in this? Well, why have the doctors gotten this so wrong for so long? Because they were looking at the symptoms, the symptoms of the high blood, high blood glucose, the high blood sugar. And they're saying, ah, that's the problem. It's the sugar that's the problem. Yes, the sugar becomes a problem at that point once you've got too much fat in the cells. That's why a high fat, high protein diet, yes, you're not contributing to the carbs that are doing that, but you're still contributing to building up the fat. You haven't changed the source of the problem. You've just changed the symptoms so that you're not getting any symptoms. You know, one of the plant-based doctors actually uh, described this really well. It says it's like putting fat in the drain and it clogs up the drain. And when you pour water in it, the water overflows. Well, the water is not the problem. Yes, the water creates a mess in your sink, but it's the fat that's clogging the drain that's the problem. That's what you need to fix. Don't put fat down the drain for one, and don't put fat down the drain of these either. It's the saturated animal fat, although saturated plant fat can, can be a contributor too as well. It's not as prevalent in our diets. Animal fats, especially saturated animal fats, are prevalent in almost every meal that um, the standard American diet is. So why why is this? Well, I'm going to read directly from this study. I'll put back up on the screen that we have a deficiency in nutrition education which on our, uh, within our medical community. According to the 2019 Global Burden of Disease, 195 studies uh, countries were studied. Dietary factors are the single leading cause of death, extracting an even greater health burden than smoking globally. Number one cause of death, diet. We are doing suicide by food right now. We know this is truth. We know this is the scientific fact. And yet here we are, the global, the, one of the largest studies ever done, 195 countries on our educational system is saying that our doctors don't know this. We have the science and they don't even know this. The, the writer of this, this paper that was published in The Lancet, by the way, which is, is considered one of the most prestigious medical journals in the world. I'm going to read it to you. It says, but in defiance of the obvious needs for physicians to possess at minimum a solid foundational skills in clinical nutrition and medical education in nutrition across the globe is decidedly lacking. When medical students do not see nutrition as substantially incorporated into their curriculum for training and do not observe their mentors incorporating nutritional in, uh, interventions into their care plans. What else can they concede but the nutrition is not important? And this is the problem. We 
our medical community, who which everybody puts their faith in, you know, oh, don't worry, my doctor will, will fix this. My doctor will give me the medic medication to cure this. We don't have a medical cure for her for diabetes. We do have a lifestyle intervention for it, though. Diet and exercise, and specifically a low-fat plant-based diet. All right, so let's jump into the studies. Study number one, June 22, up on the screen for you. Associations between dietary patterns and incidence of type 2 diabetes. Okay. So this was a big one, 120,000 people, UK biobank participants. All right, so what did they find? <laughs> okay, let's go ahead and put the results up on the screen. The results showed that the dietary pattern, high in chocolate, confectionery, and butter, as well as other sources of saturated animal fat, and low in fiber, fruits, and vegetables, was responsible for almost 50% of the risk of developing type two diabetes. Now, why chocolate in there, right? And some of you are probably, hey, wait a minute, I thought chocolate was good for you. Yeah, but chocolate is mixed with a bunch of saturated fat to make it nice and hard in a candy bar at room temperature. And it's exactly the saturated fat that's causing it. Now, if you look into that study a little bit further, this is what it says. Interestingly, a high consumption of free sugar, that is good old white table sugar per se, if not associated with additional calories and saturated fat, was not significantly associated with the risk of type 2 diabetes. Let's cover that again. Sugar, white sugar in this study, was not associated with an increase of type 2 diabetes. This led the authors to conclude that free sugar consumption is less of a concern for type 2 diabetes risk than saturated fat intake. That was the number one indicator out of all of the things they looked at. And you know what? You know what the number one, what the number one indicator for type two diabetes, for getting type two diabetes was saturated animal fat. You know what they found to be the number one preventative food source? Fruit. Number one, beating out even vegetables, fruit prevented type 2 diabetes, the higher the fruit intake, the lower the incidence of type 2 diabetes. Saturated animal fat, number one cause. Fruit, the number one preventive of type 2 diabetes. It's in the research, people. You just got to do this. That's why I love bringing to this. I know many of you aren't science geeks like I am. And that's why I love bringing this to you, translating it to you, and going over to these students. But there's a bunch of studies, so let's let's not stop there. I mean, I got uh, accused of cherry picking, right? Oh, I'm just picking out the studies that favor my point of view. Well, if that's the case, I've got five, six, seven studies right here in front of me that would do this. If that's cherry picking, I got a bowl full of cherries for you. And you're just not listening to the research if you do. Okay, so the next study. Next study is, uh, is uh, June 22. Again, these are all within May and June, the last two months. Um, the association of specific types of vegetable consumption with 10-year diabetes risk. So this was an amazing cohort study looking at a long period of time, 10 years. And they actually did a little bit deeper dive and looking at the specific vegetables and fruits that were even more beneficial for, for diet. Oh, let's see what their findings were. And the association of specific types of vegetables, specifically uh, yellow and, and orange vegetables, which are mostly starchy vegetables, uh, and they have some specific uh, phytochemicals in them. So the association of specific types of vegetable consumption with 10-year diabetes risk. So this is an amazing one. So what did they find? They found that vegetable consumption seems key for prevention of type 2 diabetes. These are direct quotes. Everything you see there in a quotation mark, these are direct quotes from the studies. That's right. Vegetable consumption seems key for the prevention of type 2 diabetes. The study of 1,485 participants for 10 years, big study, big length of time, 
those who consumed four servings of vegetables per day had a 58% lower risk of type 2 diabetes. And it was even greater in women than men, 71% lower risk just by eating four servings of vegetables a day. Oh my God, this is so easy. Everybody should be doing this. 71% decrease in your risk of uh, look, my friend in high school just died the other day from type 2 diabetes at 59 my age. I'm, I'm in perfect health. I exercise is why my risk for type 2 diabetes is even lower, but my plant-based diet, I'm a whole food plant-based diet consumer. I, I'm like, diabetes is the last thing on my mind and risk. My A1C is like nothing. This is what I'm trying to convey that she didn't have to die. Many people don't have to die. This is controllable. And this research is there. All right, let's jump to the next study. This one, also in June. This is all this nutritional research coming out, finally showing what a plant-based diet can do. All right, this study is dietary protein sources mediating biomarkers and incidence of type 2 diabetes. Now, this one is a little interesting because it's actually looking at meat yeah animal eating animal products and they found that the higher consumption of animal products led to a higher rate of type 2 diabetes now if you understand what they're referring to here is that animal protein is usually attached to like hamburgers or or, or things like hot dogs or, or or things like this are attached to saturated fats even dairy unless it's non-fat dairy uh, is attached to saturated fats. Butter is saturated fat. So um, what they're talking about here is, well, I'll not speak for them. Let's go ahead and put the results of the study up there. Animal protein consumption was associated with an increased risk of type 2 diabetes, and then those consuming the most having a 31% increased risk compared to those consuming the least. In contrast, plant-based consumption reduced the risk by 18%. So you got the main thing here, and animal products increased the risk by 31%, where type 2 diabetes decreased the risk. I mean, plant-based consumption uh, protein reduced the risk of type 2 diabetes by 18%. Real clear, what should we be putting in our bodies? Animal products? increasing the risk of type 2 diabetes, dying early in their 40s and 50s and 60s, or consuming more plants and reducing that risk and staying around and living and functioning longer. This is four studies out, all showing the same thing. Plant-based are reversing and neutralizing the effects that lead to type 2 diabetes. And, and look, it doesn't even have to be a huge change. This is from that same study replacing 5% of energy from animal protein with plant protein, 21% decreased risk of type 2 diabetes. This is insane. Just, just 5%. That's swapping out one burger, one meal with a, with a plant-based burger, a Beyond Burger instead of a, it's, although Beyond Burger is not a great example, but a veggie burger instead of a, instead of a animal product, a scrambled tofu instead of a scrambled eggs. Oh my God, it's, that's way more than 5%, but a 21% just by doing 5% energy swap out. This is what I'm saying. Just consuming more plants can be such a dramatic effect and could potentially save your life. Now, is that worth it to make just a small change and stick around for a lot longer to be here for the ones who love you, to be here for your family, your wife, your kids, your husband, your children, your your family, your friends, God, your spouse. Man, people are giving up. Really, that hamburger is worth not being here to see your kids grow up, not being here to celebrate life, not being here to even celebrate your own wealth that you've built through the years. All right, let's go to the next study. This one's in May. Dietary interventions to treat type 2 diabetes with adults with the goal of remission. So this one's really cool because what it's looking at is saying, hey, our goal here as physicians 
is to see diabetes end in you, not be there in you, not treat it with, with drugs. No, we don't want to treat it. We want it to stop. We want diabetes to end with the goal of remission. Remission means you don't have any more type 2 diabetic effects, no insulin resistance. Your insulin is working functional. Your, your blood glucose level is down. Okay, this one was pretty powerful because it says it straight up. And I'm going to post it up here on the screen. As a diet, uh, diet, diet alone, remember, nothing else, no other inventors. So let me preface this by saying they looked at three different things. Uh, let's see. Let me scroll down onto my notes page to, um, to get that. All right. So the first thing that they uh, looked at was remission should be of type 2 diabetes should be defined as uh, hemoglobin A1C levels below 6.5%. And two, with no surgery, no devices, and no pharmacological therapy, no drugs, no medications, all right? So that's the parameters. And if we're using diet with no drugs, no surgery, no, no stomach stapling or anything like that, and getting your HB1C, your A1C down below 6.5%, this is what they found. Oops, I just had it up there already. So diet as the primary intervention for type 2 diabetes is most effective in achieving remission. That means no diabetic symptoms. Your diabetes is gone. Achieving remission when emphasizing whole plant foods with minimal consumption of meat or any other animal products. There it is. It's in the research. They're saying it right out loud now. It's not debatable. This is proven over and over and over. And they achieve this just by using a low-fat, whole food, plant-based diet. They can achieve remission. That means no symptoms, no blood glucose, no high A1Cs, gone. You do not have to live with this disease. It is completely reversible, completely can be put in remission. And this, that's what the studies are. That's not me saying this. That's the research right there. <laughs> oh, my God. Okay, so let's jump to this other study. This is a 2017 study. So this one even back then was saying a plant-based diet for the prevention and treatment of type 2 diabetes. That's right. Never get diabetes to begin with. Is simply going on a plant-based diet. Okay, so let's see what they said about this. Multiple potential mechanisms underlie the benefits of plant-based diet. They're talking, it's not just one way that plants and those carbohydrate-loaded plants are actually benefiting. There's multiple pathways that's preventing the insulin resistance. Let's jump back to the quote. Multiple potential mechanisms underlie the benefits of a plant-based diet and ameliorating, that's removing, insulin resistance, including promotion of healthy body weight, increase in fiber, phytonutrients, food microbiome interactions, and decreases in saturated fat. Advanced glycation aging end products, those are the AGEs, advanced glycation end products. Those are the ones that do the damage when sugar sits there and circulates around your system and can't get in the cells because it's too loaded with fat. Even nitrosamines and heme iron. Nitrosamines are formed when you eat animal products and heme iron only comes from animal proteins. That's meat, fish, poultry, all of it. Any animal flesh has heme iron and can contribute to diabetes. Whereas plants reverse it. Gosh, it's so clear. <laughs> human beings are herbivores. You put animal products in a human being, you get disease states. Why do you think we have diabetes, heart attacks, stroke? Why do you think that the global, largest global research published in Lancet is saying that diet is the number one cause of death from disease states causing that's our diet causing our disease states that means you can change it by changing what you put in your mouth 
It's that simple. Oh my God, the studies are just so huge. This one out there, a low-fat vegan diet improves glycemic control and cardiovascular risk. So this one's pretty amazing because it actually took the American Diabetic Association, right? They've come up with what they think is the absolute best diet for diabetes, for controlling their diabetes, which includes meat, by the way, and even saturated fat, just in smaller quantities. Okay, so they said they took, all right, this is the American Diabetes Association. They took their results and put it up against a low-fat vegan diet. That's the title of the study. A low-fat vegan diet improves glycemic control and cardio risk factors. And it did so better than the American Diabetes Association diet. I'm like, oh my God, why is the American Diabetes Association not telling every people to go on a low fat when they know by their own research? Look at the results. The ADA group, the American Diabetic Group, Diabetes Association group, a 26% reduction in A1C. Um, Sorry, let me get it. Let me get. It. Oh, um, decrease in uh, diabetes medications decreased. In the vegan group, 43%. In the ADA group, 26%. The vegan diet was twice as effective at getting people off medications from diabetes. HB1, H, HB, hemoglobin A1C, or A1C as most people know it. The vegan group, 1.23%. The ADA group, 0.38% change. Do you see that? <laughs> We're talking multiple times better than the American Diabetes Association's own recommended diet, a low-fat, vegan, whole food, plant-based diet. Wow. <laughs> Weight loss. Vegan group, 14 pounds, 14.3 pounds. ADA group, 6.8 pounds, twice as effective. LDL cholesterol, 21% in vegans. The ADA group, 10%, 10 to 11%, twice as effective. So two to four times as effective at improving the markers. And the most important one, A1C, was multiple times more effective than the American diabetes own recommended diet. That's sad. That's embarrassing that a medical group, the one that people get most of their information, most of their recommendations from, the American Diabetes Association, that's embarrassing that we have a medical system that is so tied to uh, getting funding from the meat and dairy industry that they will refuse to recommend a diet that they're own study showed was twice as effective, two to four times more effective than their own study. And they still won't say it. Why are they withholding the truth from the American people? Why are they withholding the truth? We know why they're withholding the truth. It's money. We need to get the money and this funding out of the medical system. And we need to start telling people the truth and showing them the truth and showing them the studies. Well, that's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to show people, and I hope, please, share this. If you can share this with one person that changes their diet and changes their life and is here and, and here for their families instead of suffering with diabetes, suffering. My next door neighbor had his own left foot taken off because of diabetes. Another friend of mine went blind because of diabetes. And a recent high school person that I graduated with at my age just died from diabetes. This doesn't have to happen. It's in your power and in your control. And once you have this information, you can see all the research is saying the same thing. Now, why do doctors still do that? Because they've got old research. That's what they were trained on. That's what they believe and that's what they're told. Plus, you've got a very strong motivation that they don't want to believe this. They want to believe that, that, that you know, it's just the cakes and cookies that are the problem. <laughs> it's not. It's the saturated fat. Yes, cakes and cookies can have saturated fat in it too. But that's, that's not, it's not fruit. It's not sugar even. It's not carbs. It's saturated fat. And the science is bearing this out over and over and over and over again. 
I'll leave you with this last one study um, because it's just so profound. Um, uh, this study was, let's see if I pull up the right research. Okay. All right, saturated animal fat and, and protein. This is a 2014 study looking at uh, those with the highest amounts of animal um, protein intake. And obviously with the animal protein intake come saturated fat. And they found that the high animal protein intake was associated with a five-fold increase in diabetes mortality. That's a 500% increase in chance of you dying, not getting diabetes, dying from diabetes across all ages. Now the same study, read this next sentence that's on the screen. These associations were either abolished or attenuated if the proteins were plant derived. Plant proteins do not have as much of the saturated fat attached to them. It's not the carbs. Animal proteins have zero carbs in them. <laughs> Plants have lots of carbs in them. It's not the carbs. Five times more chance of dying from diabetes by eating animal proteins than eating plant proteins. Okay, I wanna leave you with a couple of good things. One is uh, uh, a friend of mine, Robbie Barbera teamed up with Cyrus uh, Kambada, and forgive me if I'm pronouncing the names wrong, and they wrote a fantastic book. I want to give them a shout out and a plug. I don't get anything for that. I'm not an affiliate. I just believe in what they're doing, what they're saying, and their brilliant research, and, and the book is phenomenal, and it's saved countless amounts of people from suffering or even dying from diabetes. Uh, it's called Mastering Diabetes. I'm gonna go ahead and put that link up on there. And you can get the book on Amazon. Um, they have a great uh, Facebook uh, site. Um, you can find out more information on that. Let's see. There it is. Uh, it's called Mastering Diabetes. You can find it on Amazon. You can go to their website and buy it from them directly. It's masteringdiabetes.com. Uh, amazing. They're, they're, they're both vegan. They're both high fruit. And, um, and Robbie's even type 1 diabetes. And they even talk about both type 1 and type 2 diabetes and dietary changes that can help improve your life, help you live longer, and enjoy life responsibly wonderful book, wonderful website. Uh, they do consulting too. So if you uh, uh, have the money to pay for consulting and you want to save yours or somebody you love's life, um, do get them introduced to this. It's a phenomenal piece. Um, also, you can check out um, a brilliant video. I, I love this video from um, nutritionfacts.org. Um, it's one of my favorite videos because it actually gives you a visual. It will show you it's uh, what causes insulin resistance is the name of the study. So you just go to nutritionfacts.org um, or you can follow this link on the screen and um, just type in what causes insulin resistance. It's a very short video, but it actually shows you a digital version of what's actually going on in the cells so you can see what's going on in the cells the mechanisms of actions as as fats enter the cell as they clog the cell as they close down the gates that don't allow sugar in you can visually see the whole process i i use this as a great tool um, to get people to get a visual understanding of what's going on at a cellular level because i feel like if we actually see what's going on at a cellular level we can really get it and then we can easily convey that and put that in our own words to other people or even direct them to this video so that you can um, get this information to other people because my goal here is to really is to share this information get this information out to people so i'm depending on people like you who are listening either right now live thank you uh um angela i know you always tune in i love that you come in you always ask great questions um they're they're you know there there's so much good information here in the research community finally coming out looking at what a plant-based diet can do 
I really want to get this out to the mainstream because the vast majority of people still believe that carbs and sugar cause diabetes and they and they don't. And the science is overwhelmingly showing that they don't. <laughs> it's the saturated fat that's causing it. And that exercise, even with a little saturated fat from plants, if you are vigorously exercising, keep those muscles moving, keep them stretching, keep them vital, because that helps us utilize and burn through this and allow that flow of energy to keep coming into ourselves in a healthy way and not form these AGE, uh, these you know, end products that are toxic and damaging can cause blindness. Don't go blind over your diet. Don't lose your arms and limbs uh, and legs over this diet, uh, over your diet. You can choose a plant-based diet and have healthy limbs even at 60 years of age and beyond. So no reason for this. I want to see less people suffer. I want to see more people. Look, I was robbed. I was robbed of, of my brothers, both of my brothers. I was robbed of my mother and father at way too early an age. I really wish they were here. And I, I hope those you love will listen. I hope that what we can do together to get this information out helps people not have to suffer, not have to deal with the suffering loss of losing people they love to a preventable, so preventable um, change in, in diet and exercise. It's so simple. It's why I do what I do. It's why I form Clean Machine to try to give people nutrients and, and different plant-based nutrition to really help them get results sooner, help them change their lives around and live a healthy and happy life. Please, please, please share if you can, uh, if you feel up to it, if you feel moved by this. I know this was a little bit of a long one, but I I posted it. I'm going to post again all of this research uh, on the website and I will also post it because it's so important to get this information out of the colleges. These are four to five brand new studies just coming out and they're all basically saying the same thing, that a plant-based diet, a whole food, low-fat plant-based diet can reverse and uh, end diabetes, end this suffering. It doesn't need to happen. And I hope you can help spread this message. Thank you all for what you're doing out there. Thank you for listening and tuning in. I'll be back with some more information on this and many other subjects keeping you informed of what's going on in the scientific community, making it consumable so that you can understand it and share it with others so we can help make this place a better world with less suffering in it. Thanks for, thanks for watching.